Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Much Brew About Nothing. And this week, we are spinning to win in modern with five color glimpse of Tomorrow Cascade. So let's talk about this ridiculous deck. Jump into a league, see it in action. So here is our absurd five color Glimpse of Tomorrow deck. So what are we trying to do? Well, first, we're trying to guess Glimpse of Tomorrow without suspending it. It's basically a free warp world. When it resolves, we shuffle all of our permanents into our deck, and then we reveal that many cards can put any permanents we hit into play. So we're trying to upgrade lands, tokens, things like that into big finishers. Of course, we don't want to suspend Glimpse of Tomorrow. That's too slow. So we have two Cascade spells, Shardless Agent, Violent Outburst, which on turn three can cascade into glimpse the only card cheap enough for our cascade spells to hit if we draw a glimpse we can also cast it from our hand with as foretold so this gives us a bunch of ways to have turn three glimpse in tomorrow so what are we trying to hit with glimpse in tomorrow we got four big finishers emergal eons torn iona archon of cruelty just the biggest baddest creatures in modern omniscience doesn't directly finish the game but it lets us cast our big finishers or more glimpse of tomorrows if we whiff from hand the problem with this plan is if you think about what we're trying to do plastic glimpse of tomorrow's on turn three the floor is we only have three permanents we go land 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 glimpse of tomorrow's and we could easily whiff and just hit some lands hit some whatever random horrible non-finisher stuff so we need ways to get more permanents on the battlefield quickly for this we got a few plans wave sifter really sweet in this deck we evoke it for two mana get two clues we don't really want to crack them for card draw we just want to have them on the battlefield to up our permanents for glimpse of tomorrow also leyline of sanctity leyline of the void can start in play Leyline of Sanctity also protects us from discard, which is pretty good against our deck. Mana Base, the sweetest lane, Colney Garden makes a plant when it comes into play, so two permanents for one land. In the sideboard, mostly focused on beating hate cards like Chalice of the Void, Void Mirror, Thalia, Sancta Prelate, Counter Spells, bunch of different answers in our sideboard that don't mess with our Cascade plan, and that is five color Glimpse of Tomorrow. Is this like a meme? Is it a real thing? Is it the return of to, to Bolt's Trickery? Is it a real dominant force in the format? At. How good can it be? Let's jump into a league. Find out. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoy it. And I'll be back in a bit with a wrap up. Need some new Modern Horizons cards? Well, you can order them today from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, by heading over to cardkingdom.com. All right, much brew about nothing time. We are spinning to win in a. Oh, please don't draw the last glimpse. Or have a thought, sees. <laughs> We're spinning to win in, in Modern with a glimpse of tomorrow. <laughs> Memeing it up. Call the garden go. I mean, if we're not disrupted, and if we don't draw our third glimpse, which would be a nightmare, this hand's great. Flame Blade Adept. Opponent passes. Well, Misty Rainforest. Crack it for an island. Wave Shifter. Make some clues. Well, okay. Can we fade one more turn of disaster? Opponent on Hollow One by the looks. Untaps. I guess Burning Inquiry could awkwardly get us. Cycle Street Wraith grows the Dork. Sure. Cycles Street Wraith grows the Dork. Oh my god. Another Street Wraith. And a land. Asmore makes a food. Gets or gets a gets a cookbook. Plays a cookbook. Alright, well, discards Grizzlebrand. Well, we'll see. We're gonna spin to win and see what happens. Ponet hits us. Well, we will Misty. We will crack it. Snow-covered forest. And this is our shot. Shardless agent. Six permanents. Hit the glimpse. All right, all right, all right. Be good, be good. Okay, this actually isn't that bad. We get an Archon. We make our opponent sack. Because we get to immediately glimpse again. And maybe hit better. Oh, that Omniscience would have been nice. Yeah, well, we're just going to glimpse again. Float our mana. Glimpse. Okay, that was worse. Uh, well, sack this. Okay, we got one more. One more shot at it. Sack this, then the deck. Snow-covered island. <laughs> sack this, then the deck. Snow-covered forest. Play an omniscience with omniscience. Shardless agent. Just to up our permanent count. Nothing to cascade into. Yeah. Float our mana, glimpse with omniscience. Come on, come on, deck. Well, I guess that's fine. We will name black. 
And we only get to keep one Iona, but that should still be enough. Okay. Well, it took three, it took three glimpses, but I think we might have gotten there finally. Iona on black means they can't reanimate Grizzlebrand. And without reanimating Grizzlebrand, I don't know, okay. <laughs> wow. All right. That was wild, but we got there. <laughs> ley, ley line of the Voids in. Uh, go down a couple Ley Line of Sanctities. Um... Yeah, that, that just might be it. Do we want Foundation Breakers? Does that even matter? Mystical Disputes? Leyline does seem good. I guess Foundation Breaker can kill Hollow One. Let's go down Let's go down all the Ley Lines of Sanctity. Run it like that. Well? <laughs> that was not That was not the smoothest way to win, but oh my goodness, this is just like the last hand. Double Glimpse in Hand and a Shardless Agent. I don't know if we keep... We do have the mana. Do we keep this? Opponent's mulliganing. Yeah, I guess we, we're gonna keep. I mean, it worked out last time. <laughs> I don't know how many thought seizes our opponent can afford to play, honestly. Black Leaf Glyphs. I mean, I guess worst case, we could suspend a glimpse. All right, cookbook. Well, Colony Garden, not bad. I mean, definitely worried about them just reanimating Grizzlebrand. That would, that would be real bad. Burning Inquiry. Something will happen. Well, I guess that's relatively fine. Blood Crypt. Untapped. Flame Blade Adept. Well, Misty Rainforest. Go. Opponents only got two cards in hand. Flame Blade Adept. Sure. Discards Cookbook. Okay. Grows the Dorks. And hits us. We might actually wait one more turn. Well, crack this. Get a Snow Covered Island. Untap. Ooh, now we're definitely waiting one more turn. Wave Shifter. Evoke it. Get a couple clues. What did Foothills? So the risk is that they draw like another burning inquiry or a thought seize i think swamp combat hits us we will take it down to 15 and blood moon that's fine get a snow covered forest okay well we get to spin it to win it and we do have a decent number of permanents we will play a colony guard we will shardless age it one two three four five six seven permanents cascade glimpse seven shots uh yeah let's name black Keep an Iona. Get a Shardless Agent. Oh, the Omniscience is great, because now we get to Archon? That should do it. Archon with Omniscience. Make you sack. An opponent, done. And th <laughs> that's what the deck can do. You never know with this deck. It is either the greatest thing ever, or it is the most spectacular flame out ever. It reminds me a little bit of like the Tibalt Trickery deck, in that it's incredibly powerful and consistent at doing its thing, but if you can stop its thing, it just does, it does so little. Well, uh, that was a good one. <laughs> sweet, sweet. All right. <laughs> Much to about nothing time. We are spinning a win in Modern with a glimpse of tomorrow's, <laughs> and we'll, we'll keep this. This and it's okay. Thought Seas would be pretty bad for us. Blood Crypt untapped. Aragabon. Well, Colony Garden. Go. Another Cascade Spell is actually not bad. Question's gonna be, do we have to chump this Aragabon? It puts us down a permanent, which isn't great, but our opponent getting a treasure is also not great. Oh, all right. Well, they're gonna answer that for us. They're going to kill the dork, hit us. Our deck should not be too kind to our opponent. They steal a Shardless Agent. Bloodstain Mire cracks it. Blood Crypt untapped down to 50. Scourge of the Skyclaves. Well, Misty. Crack it. Snow Covered Island. Evoke a Wave Shifter. All right. Well, I mean, it is all just going to come down to this. It's going to come down to our Cascade. That is going to be... That is going to be the game. About it. Combat hits us. Yeah. Down to 12. Gets a Treasure. Three cards in hand. Silent Clearing. Gets Luris. All right. Well, um... Yeah, what if fails? Crack it. Snow covered forest. And spin it to win it. Shardless agent. Glimpse it tomorrow. And five shots. We need something big. Iona on black. Hmm. Is that enough? We could just immediately spin again. Oh, I guess we can spin on our opponent's turn because of omniscience. All right, yeah. I mean, we'll just pass. We'll just pass. If our opponent does something scary, then we can. We can just Violent Outburst and try again to hit something good. Opponent sacks the land. Combat attacks. So if we block here, we gotta do something. Yeah, we'll block. Opponent cracks. Blood Crypt. Well, we will Violent Outburst. Spin into Glimpse. 
And please be good. Well, okay. Double Archon's reasonable. <laughs> we will accept that. An opponent will scoop him up. Okay. <laughs> well, sometimes it takes two, but... <laughs> When it works, it really works. Uh, opponent playing a Death Shadow deck. What do we What do we want against this deck? What the The question is always, what hate cards do they have? Maybe we try the Brazen Borrowers. Leyline of the Void probably not necessary. Leyline of Sanctity is good. Could bring in Bone Crusher, Foundation Breaker. Like, do we have to worry about Do we have to worry about them playing hate? Is the question. Probably not. All right, let's try it like that. Brazen Borrower is kind of an answer. The The question is, like, do they have Chalice of the Void? Do they have Void Mirror? Something like that. Those are the cards that can most easily get us. Well, opponent's on the play. Let's see what our hand looks like. Oh, well, I mean, this is a this is a pretty easy keep. Two Ley Lines to stop Discard. We got the Shardless, so... Yeah, I mean, we'll see if our opponent has hate cards of some kind. If not... This hand is about what we want. The ley lines are huge, because Dash Shadow Deck's all about the all about the discard. And being able to shut that down is pretty huge. Opponent, Bloodstained Mire cracks it. Blood Crypt. Untapped. Ragamon. Well, Colony Garden. Go. Opponent bobbles. And cracks it. And lightning bolts. And Ragavons. It's ooh, we would have liked that actually, but alright. Hits our wave shifter. Cast the lightning bolt at their own face. Draws a card. Well, play the land past the turn. So it looks like we're gonna go X5? Or have five shots at it? That's not a ton. It's not bad, but it is also not a ton. Opponent. Treasure. We could whiff. Voidwalker. Alright, well, crack this. Snow-covered island. I mean, we gotta go for it. We gotta go for it. Untap. Steam vents. Well... Be good, Shardless Agent. Shardless Agent, Cascades. Glimpse, the moment of truth. What do we find? Okay, that's an Emrakul. Oh my god. That's an Emrakul and a Omniscience. Well, we will cast Iona on black. We will cast an Emrakul to get the extra turn. And uh, I think that should do it. We untap and uh, yeah, go to combat. Swing at you a smidge. Annihilate you a bit and... Whew. Okay, well, we spun it to one at that time. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. So ridiculous. Well, let's keep hoping our luck's good. <laughs> sweet, sweet. Much to about nothing time. We are spinning to win with Glimpse of Tomorrow in Modern. Also, Mulliganing. Hmm. Sand is a lot of what we want, minus the lands to cast what we want. So I think we gotta keep mulliganing. Oh boy, zero lands. Uh-oh. Well, we've seen the good of the deck. Now we might be seeing the bad. We're not mulliganing to three. We are putting, well, all right. Actually, you know what? Maybe our best bet is to put back one land and trust that we draw one and keep the ley line because of discard. I think that's better. All right, so we're gonna need to draw land basically. We have Shardless Agent. We have a Ley Line to protect from discard. We need we need to find one more land and we get to spin and anything can happen. Forest for our opponent. Arbor Elf, sure. Opponent passes. That's Colony Garden. We will play it. Well, okay, that is a land. That is probably the best land, actually. Well, no, no land destruction, please. Prismatic Vesta. Opponent cracks it. Does our opponent know how close they are to disaster? Oh boy, Utopia Sprawl. On white. Taps, untaps, taps. Oriac Champion, Noble Hierarch. Well, we will see. That's an Emrakul. Would rather have it in our deck, but Misty Rainforest. Crack Misty Rainforest. Get a Snow-Covered Island. And let's see what happens. Spinner to win it, Spinner to win it. Shardless Agent. We have five permanents this time. Shardless. Spins. Glimpse. Oh, yes. That is perfect. Iona on white. Uh, we will not pay life. And this actually just wins because we have the Emrakul. So maybe drawing the Emrakul was a good thing. Because now we get to cast the Emrakul and we just win. <laughs> <laughs> because we spun into the omniscience. All right, opponent gonna gain a little bit of life. I do not think it'll be enough to save them. Uh, Emrakul with omniscience. And uh, yeah, good game well played. <laughs> we will go to our extra turn. Uh, well, we don't even need to. Opponent scoops it up. Busterino. <laughs>
<laughs> this deck is so funny when it works. Uh, okay, so, opponent. What hate cards might they have? Pro so, this might be a matchup where where what we want most is Bone Crusher Giant to just deal with random creatures. Maybe we need a Foundation Breaker or two, or like a Brazen Borrower. Who knows what could be in their sideboard. Damping Sphere is probably the most likely. Well, Leyline of the Void doesn't matter, so we can cut that. Go up two Bone Crushers. Leyline of Sanctity, does it matter enough is the question. Oh, they could have Sanctum Prelate too. You know what? I think we go down Leyline of Sanctity and go up two Bone Crushers, two Brazen Borrowers. Let's go. Let's go full on Dirty Eldrain player. <laughs> <laughs> bring in all the bring in all the adventures. Let's go on an adventure. Um, huh. This hand does not let us cast a glimpse, so I think we mulligan. Also does not have any of our sideboard cards. Well, fair enough. I mean, we'll see if our opponent has sideboard hate cards, but this does have multiple multiple chances of cascading into the win. Oh boy. <laughs> so many emercles. We put one to the bottom and another one on top. Well, play the plant. Opponent. Wins up teeth. Passing. Bone Crusher is actually a pretty big draw. Snow covered mountain. This means if our opponent has Sanctum Prelate, which would probably be one of their main answers, that we can just kill it and then proceed to cast a violent outburst and pray real hard about it. Planes. Heliod. Okay. Well, untap. Oh. I mean, I think we gotta go for it, right? Like, we have to. Yeah, I mean, what if I else crack it? Get a breeding pool, untapped. Shardless agent, only four permanents, that's not a big number. Omniscience would be the best. Glimpse. Okay, well, that's actually reasonable. Two Archons, Mega Discard, Mega Discard. Oh, so close to the Omniscience. We have zero lands, which is awkward, but all right. Make some clues and pass the turn. See if our opponent can find a way to beat us. We can beat infinite life. We can't beat infinite damage from Ballista. That does that does get us. But I don't think they have the mana to do that. Spike feeder, sure. Yeah, we so we don't care about this because we can shuffle our graveyard in an infinite number of times and annihilate all of our opponent's permanents. So in theory, infinite life doesn't matter to us. Like, our opponent goes to a million life, but we can deal a million damage. And our opponent's going to be locked out of permanence once we start doing what we want to do. So, I feel like we actually win in this scenario. Alright, so, as foretold, sticks up. Takes up. We draw an Emrakul. We go to combat. Attack. Attack. Draw some cards. Opponent loses their hand. We do draw land, thankfully. So we're gonna try to we're gonna try to play it as realistically as possible here. Play the land. Discard an Emrakul. Discard a Omniscience. Opponent. So opponent needs to find infinite damage, basically, before we annihilate their permanence. There's a ballista, but that doesn't do it because we ha we force them to sacrifice. Take up as foretold. Go to combat. Attack. Get rid of the ballista. Draw a couple cards. Opponent. Yeah, gonna do some pinging. Sure. So what's happening here is, in reality, our opponent would be at like a billion life. And so we're trying not to kill them with damage. We're trying to, we're trying to uh, get to the point where we can, where we can emercal and, and annihilate their permanence. And then we, and then we have the straight up win. Uh, we'll discard a glimpse of tomorrow a Iona in Emrakul. Shuffle a bit. So yeah, that's a long-term game plan, is is Emrakul Annihilate. And opponent gives us a GG. Walking Ballista. <laughs> yeah, opponents just, they have they have given up. Well, I mean, I think our deck, our opponent says they can't win anymore, and I think that's true, and that is, that's three wins in a row. <laughs> So just so it's clear what's going on in that situation, because that was a little bit weird, our opponent had infinite life. Except on Moto, it's hard to gain millions of life because you run out of time. So what I was trying to do is play as if our opponent had infinite life and not kill them with damage. How we win is we essentially just lock them with Emrakul. They get to 10 billion life, but we get out an Emrakul, and then we just 
annihilate their permanence every turn so they can't actually cast anything. And then, since Emrakul's, we can just keep discarding him the hand size to shuffle our graveyard in, then we actually beat infinite life. Like, it'll take a ridiculous number of turns, but eventually, even if our opponent's at a billion life, we will deal a billion plus one damage. And once our opponent has no permanence, they're essentially just hard locked out of the game. So that's why we were, like, not attacking with Shardless Agent and whatnot. We were trying to, like, simulate what it would be like if our opponent was at a million life. But regardless, infinite life, no problem. <laughs> sweet, sweet. Much brew about nothing time. We are spinning to win in modern with a <laughs> glimpse of tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, making making things happen. Good or bad, I don't know, but something's gonna happen. This hand does nothing. We will mulligan. This hand... Ooh, Luris. Hmm. This hand's actually pretty good, except for Thoughtseize probably gets us... I think we keep it, though. I think it's... I think it's strong enough that we can... We can take the risk. There's lots of different Luris decks. They could just be playing Burn or something. If our opponent's on, like, Death Shadow with a ton of discard, the hand probably isn't gonna work out, but... In theory, like, land into Wave Shifter, Evoke, get some permanence on the battlefield, into As Foretold Glimpse, as long as we draw land, and, and uh, that's what our deck wants to do. Well, all right. Non-thought sees Luris deck, please. Just be Burn. Be Burn. I think we can beat Burn with this hand. Oh, okay. Well, we don't gotta worry about Thought Seize. Opponent appears to be playing Affinity, which is a scary deck. Urza Saga, and Spring Leaf. Oh, opponent's just gonna have their hand on the battlefield, and... Oh, it's ham. Oh boy. Well, steam vents. We could just be dying. Was not expecting cigar to say. Uh, we will evoke, and we will pray really hard for an untapped land. Not a colony garden. Any untapped land. Spin it to win it. The problem is worst. Best case is this. Urza Saga is gonna be able to get a ha hammer. Wow. So we have one turn. We have one turn. We gotta draw the untapped land. Come on, deck. Untapped land. Untapped land. Come on. Keep the good times going. Oh, Violent Outburst. So we're dead, right? Ink Moth, Hammer. I mean, we can we can let our opponent show it, but yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe our opponent's deck is slightly more unfair than our deck. Makes a Karnstruct. I mean, we should be dead here if our opponent sees the line. Just like tap this, fire up Ink Moth. This gets Colossus Hammer. Put, well, no, I guess we're not just dead, are we? Because it loses flying. <laughs> So we actually are not dead. Wow, good thing we didn't scoop. All right, so we're not dead yet. We are still in a very, very, very sketchy position. I assume they're getting a hammer. Yeah, they're putting on a construct. Sure. Okay, that's a 16-16. Opponent goes to combat. That does mean we're going to need to chump. We do get two draws at a land. Okay, well, there's the land. I mean, I guess we'll see. Anything, anything can happen. So we chump. We drop to 16. Opponent passes. Wooded Foothills. Crack Wooded Foothills. Snow covered. I guess it doesn't matter really. It's getting shuffled in. Forest. As foretold. Glimpse of tomorrow. That's actually not the worst. Um, we will name White. We will keep an Emrakul. Shuffle things in. Okay. Well, I mean, in theory, we we got a shot. We do have a shot. We can chump block with the Iona. I mean, I guess another hammer is is a problem. But we can chump block with Iona, annihilate with Emrakul, and see what happens. We can glimpse again, too, although we're not going to have any permanents. I guess our opponent is also not going to have any permanents. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, this is going to be weird. Opponent goes to combat. Attacks. Well, we block with Iona. So I think we're going to have to annihilate and then glimpse again to try to hit some blockers. Last card. Oh, they just got the other Lures. Okay, sure. And Giver of Runes. Well, we're going to have to get a little lucky. We untap. Land would be fine because it ups our permanent count. Oh, omniscience. All right, well, yeah, we're going to have to get lucky. We can't stay back on defense because then we got to chump with Emrakul. So we got to attack with Emrakul. Wow, this is gonna be this is gonna be close. Opponent gets annihilated, sacks a bunch of stuff, and then yeah, we gotta we gotta glimpse again with only three permanents. Opponent sacks, 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 sacks. Shouldn't they keep this? Okay. Opponent sacks a bunch of stuff, drops to four, and we will glimpse. Okay. Omniscience. 
Iona and pass the turn. We can glimpse the imps in speed if we need to off of this violent outburst, but I think we can just chump and then attack with Iona to win. Wow. That was a good glimpse with only three permanents. <laughs> <laughs> Our opponent had an insane draw, and it wasn't it wasn't insane enough. Was not insane enough. And opponent, yeah, cannot beat it. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh alright, so Leyland of the Void's out. We definitely need all the foundation breakers. Could possibly use bone crushers. I think the question's gonna be, how worried are we about getting thought seized? Do we need to keep Leyline of Sanctity to not get thought seized? Bone Crusher also seems good. Yeah, maybe we go down the ley lines. Let's go down all the ley lines. Go down one Iona and one as foretold. Run it like that. Okay, well, boy, this deck's been working. Watch us get blown out by Thought Seize now. You know what? We're gonna keep this. <laughs> We're gonna keep it. This is turn three Cascade with a token from Colony Garden. We don't have an answer to hate cards. And our opponent's deck can kill on turn two with its best draw. So no guarantees, but this seems reasonable. Opponent, Mulligan and Defined, either the kill or an answer, I assume. Planes and Springleaf Drum. That's fine. Um, eh, Colony Garden, Mega Dork, go. So what would be good? Any answer spells, Bone Crusher or, oh, all right, that's gonna be able to get a hammer in the future. Stoneforge gets a hammer. Yeah, they don't have a way to equip yet though. Just kidding, they do. All right, Gemstone Caverns. Well, we will play Misty Rainforest. Pass the turn. So we know a hammer's coming. We know it's equipping. This is gonna come down to spinning well on another not super powered up Violent Outburst, I think. Opponent goes to combat. We can't block, right? If they have double Colossus Hammer in hand, then we'd be dead. We know they have one. If their last card is also Colossus Hammer, we just lose. But if we cash in this plant, our Violent Outburst gets even worse. What are the chance? The chances aren't that good. They're gonna wanna make a Karnstruct. Yeah, I mean, if you got two hammers and you got us. That would be, that would be a blowout. Are we dead? I mean, I guess also if they make a hammer, they don't get to make the Urza Saga construct this turn. So maybe they don't do it. All right, there's a hammer. Equips. All right, only one. Esper Sentinel. All right, well, you're gonna draw a card. We will crack, go down to eight. Get a steam vents tapped. Untap, wooded foothills, crack it snow-covered forest and let's see what happens shardless agent four permanents cascade come on glimpse come on glimpse opponent gets to draw a card of course no we cannot bay big things not big things huh okay well pass the turn I mean, I guess in theory, in theory we still have hope though, because we can, we can block. We can block and try again next turn. All right, there's the Karnstruct. So opponent, I assume gets another hammer. Oh, gets Shadow Sphere. Oh, that makes us die, doesn't it? Huh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we're a mana short. Well, fair enough. All right, all right, all right. There is a fail rate. We saw that there. That was not a, that was not a game ending. That was not a game ending glimpse. The challenge is our opponent's deck is so aggressive that we don't have really much time to wait and try to set things up. So we are kind of trying to get a little lucky. Well, all right. I do like Bone Crusher. Bone Crusher can answer our opponent's first thing. Still got to hope to dodge the hate a bit, but yeah. Colony Garden, Bone Crusher into Violent Outburst. Seems reasonable enough. Well, if we're going to lose... Might as well lose to Hammer Time. Hammer Time is a sweet deck. And Urza Saga is an absurd new addition. Well, Colony Garden, Mega Plant, go. What do you got? Ornithopter and Urza Saga and Springleaf Drum and Cigardazade, probably. I mean, that's, yeah, Cigardazade. So that's a pretty fast start. Opponent passes. Wooded Foothills, go. Actually, I guess we, let's just crack this now. I don't want there to, some, uh, to be some weird scenario where we get punished by having to crack our fetch with the Cigar to Zade out. Opponent, Urza Saga, triggering. One thing I do like is that Violent Outburst can let us cascade at instant speed, so we can wait to see what our opponent does. And then cascade or not cascade based on what our opponent does. Gets a Colossus Hammer, goes to combat. Attacks. Yeah. Colossus Hammer. Well, let us stomp. 
untap. Uh, Missy Rainforest. Do we just go right now? Yeah, all right. Crack it. Yeah, I mean, what do you, what do, you do? You go for it. We got to go for it. The reason to do it main phase is if we hit Omniscience, we can cast the Emrakul and we just win. Yeah, Violent Outburst. Four permanents. Glimpse. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. Oh, blow up cigar to Zade. Okay, so this, this is okay. <laughs> this is okay because we get rid of the cigar to Zade, and we have another violent outburst in hand. So in two more turns, we can spin again. That was not the I win. That was not the I win turn though. That was not just us winning the game with a single glimpse of tomorrow. Sadly, it is gonna take two more turns. Because we only hit one land. All right, gets the Shadow Spear. Silent Clearing. As per Sentinel. All right, opponent passes. We will play Wooded Foothills. Pass the turn. Well, all right, opponent, let's see what you can do. Untaps. Two cards in hand. Please no hate cards. I guess we could have chipped in for three in there. Mem Knight, okay. What is the scariest thing? Pure Steel Paladin, I think, just beats us. Because they can double equip. Pure Steel Paladin or a hate card? Ink Moth. Okay. Well, this does mean we're not dead. Opponent sacks to draw. Well, I get one more draw. Is it Pure Steel Paladin? I guess we're not just dead to Pure Steel, are we? It's bad, but we're not just straight up dead. Equip Shadow Sphere. Well, yeah. We take it, and then we spin it to win it. Opponent hits us for seven. All right, don't fail us. Don't fail us twice. Wooded Foothills. We will get a... What do we have left in our deck? Mountain, Mountain Forest. Oh, get a Stomping Grounds. Tapped. Untap. Misty Rainforest. Crack it. I mean, we're just gonna... We're gonna do it. We gotta do it. Snow-Covered Island. Violent Outburst. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is a big number. Opponent gets to draw a card. We will not pay. We cannot pay. Cascade. Glimpse. Shuffle them in. Huh. Actually not that good. Yikes. Okay. That's actually real bad. Opponent sex Stoneforge. We draw Foundation Breaker. We investigate. We make plans. Oh, dear. Yeah, that was, that was about as bad, as bad as bad could be. Like, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but that's definitely not good. Oh, no. Well, I mean, I guess this is good, because we've just been crushing people. So I guess it's good that we see there, there is a fizzle rate to this deck. And there are times when we end up getting wrecked, because our glimpse does not actually save us. The opponent, Pure Steel Paladin, equips, goes to combat attacks well we one two three four five six seven they can fire up these eight so if we block like this we soak up eight damage this is going to be 19 power so we're taking 11 which means we can't crack the fetch oh the esper sentinel i think might have saved our opponent well that and our deck fizzling huh Oh, this is actually super tough. Do we have to block with the Archon? Maybe. But we really want the card draw from this Archon. No, actually, this is fine. Because we go to one, but then we can attack with Archon to gain three. So we will be able to crack the fetch. All right. So two, four, six, seven, eight. We go to one. If our opponent fires up the Ink Moth, we keep the Archon. Ink Moth, Ink Moth. And then we hope that <laughs> these two draws save us. So we go to one. Opponent goes to 41. We untap. Omniscience, that would have been good in the past. Well, go to combat, get in with Archon. We draw, Cascade Spell, please. Wave Shifter, that doesn't do it. Ah, so we can kill the hammer, but then we still die, right? Yeah, we do. Well, <sighs> well, in while I'm disappointed that that means we're not gonna 5-0, I'm also sort of glad that happened because there is risk to this plan. And that was a situation where we did everything we were supposed to do. We build up some pretty good glimpse of tomorrow's and we just didn't hit well off of them. So that is a, that is a thing. That's a thing that can happen with this deck. Well, one more to go. 
much improved about nothing time. We are spinning to win in modern with Glimpse the Unthinkable, or Glimpse of Tomorrow. Huh. I think we mulligan this. We have the glimpse, but, well, all right. I guess we keep this. A little worried about getting thought sees. We are up against a Lurus deck. Although, Leyline is theoretically good, at least against some Lurus decks. You never know with Lurus. Lurus could be anything. Well, tap land, go. Opponent. No thought see. Ooh, burn? Okay. Okay, okay. Opponent hits us, we get a free land. We will play a snow-covered forest. Well, this means we should get to spin to win. Opponent goes to combat, hits a stop card. Another free land. And skewer. Oh, boy. The problem with burn is it's really fast. I would prefer evoking this wave shifter and then cascading next turn, but we're at 13. This hits us to 11. Bolt, 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 bolt. Do we need to be concerned about literally dying? Yeah, I think we just gotta do it, unfortunately. Yeah? Opponents pressured us enough. Well, Shardless Agent. Spin it. Glimpse. Let's get a little lucky. Hit an Iona at least. Okay, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. We will accept that. The life gain from Archon is pretty huge. And that gets rid of the Goblin Guide. Yeah, I think this Archon is, is hopefully good enough. Opponent. Loses a goblin guy, discards a card, we get some clues, we get a shard. Well, all right, bolts, sure. Well, Iona would have been game over, but we will accept a Archon of Cruelty. Opponent, Sunbaked Canyon, Searing Blaze. And okay, so opponent's staying alive. They're down to one card, though. We wouldn't mind just drawing a glimpse. Um, Misty Rainforest, go to combat, attack you. Down to 11. Opponent untaps. Well, maybe Archon won't be good enough. Opponent. Swift Spia. Combat. Attacks. Well, we're going to block. Get that last spell out of their hand. Boros Charm down to 6. Yup. Well, we're going to have to crack. Well, yeah, there's not much difference between, between 6 and 5 in this matchup. Breeding Pool tapped. Untap. Take it up. Omniscience. Snow Covered Mountain. Hitch ya. Down to seven. Wow, this is going to be so close. Opponent untaps. Cracks. Goblin Guide. Attacks. Top card. Leyline. Well, block the Goblin Guide. Untap. Tick up. Play Gemstone Cavern. Sadly, cannot wave shifter because of our mana. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I mean, do we attack first? I guess. Go to combat, attack you, and spin it to win it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven shots. Glimpse. Okay, that is what we wanted. Archon does it. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, okay. We made it interesting, but we got there. We got there in the end. <laughs> oh, this take is so ridiculous. All right. What do we want against Burn? What hate cards might they have? That is the that is a real question. I can't imagine they're playing too much hate for our deck. I think we go down Ley Lines to the Void. Go up two Bone Crushers. Go down a As Foretold for a Bone Crusher and a Wave Sifter and just try it like that. Leyline is great. And as we saw there, our Cascade plan can be good enough. Sometimes it takes a couple of shots, but ooh, hmm. This is Leyline and nothing else. I think we mulligan. I don't think just Leyline is, is enough if we can help it. Well, not enough lands. Ooh, okay. This we like. We will put Glimpse to the bottom. Archon to the bottom. This is Leyline plus Cascade spells. All right, maybe our opponent has some surprise hate cards that we're not expecting. Otherwise, all we need is a land. All we need is a land, and we get to spin it. And Leyline can be devastating against Burn. Like, if our opponent doesn't have creatures and they just have a handful of bolts, Leyline probably just beats them by itself. They're really thinking on their upkeep. I don't know if they're considering scooping to the Leyline. Mountain. All right, so they do have a spell, or do have a non-burn spell in Swift Spear. Hits us. Well, Colony Garden, go. Opponent, combat, attacks. Sure. Down to 18. Land, tapped, and skewers our plant. Well, Misty, pass the turn. Sacred Foundry untapped. Gets a Lurus. The question is, how long do we wait? Opponent hits us. Down to 17. Get a Stomping Grounds tap untap hmm well let's play misty and pass 
We can cascade at instant speed if we need to. We can also just bone crush her. Sunbake Canyon, opponent, goes to combat, attacks, hits us. Down to 15. Plays Luris. Well, let's stomp Luris. Untap. Misty. One, two, so we're up to five. The problem is if we do it, we probably lose our ley line. Yeah, let's just, let's wait. Rift Bull, gonna have to target our opponent. And I mean, we can still do it at instant speed if something goes wrong. Opponent hits themselves down to 14. Sacks the canyon. Land. Hits us. All right, down to 13. I'll crack one of these. Get a breeding pool tapped. Untap. All right, so I think we're just gonna do it at the end of our opponent's turn. I think that's our plan. Opponent going to hit us. Down to 11. Eidolon. Well, we're going to do it right now. All right. Violent Outburst. Five shots. Yeah. Glimpse of Tomorrow. Cast it. That should be good enough. That And we got the Leyline back, too. That's definitely good enough. <laughs> Opponent scoops it up. Okay, okay. Well, we almost memed our way to a 5-0. <laughs> We spun it to win it, spin it to win it, whatever. We uh, we glimpsed it tomorrow into a 4-1, and our one loss was that ridiculously close game to to uh, <laughs> to hammer time where we just kind of fizzled. We just had bad glimpses of tomorrow. So let's crack open some treasure chests. One of five, Kirk's Thumb. That might be a sign that we need to coin flip on against odds in the near future. Well, number two, we get... Eerie ultimatum. Sweet card, not valuable card. Number three, Tempted by the Orc, full border. And Hydra Broodmaster. These have not been the most exciting treasure chests. Clockwork Dragon. <laughs> White Sun Zenith. One more shot. Come on, give us a sweet old border card. A complete set. Something. Dead of Winter. Well, treasure chest not great, but the meme was was pretty effective. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take it. Sweet, sweet. Four and one. Clips of tomorrow. Well, let's talk about it in the wrap up. So, what did we learn this week about five color glimpse of tomorrow's in modern? And we came oh so close to another 5 0. We finished four and one, with our one loss being that match to hammer time that went to three games. In game three, we cast glimpse of tomorrow two times, but they just weren't very good. We didn't hit finishers. And in some ways, I'm glad that happened. While it, it would have been nice to get another 5 0, I, I think it's good to see the drawback of this deck because we were just kind of crushing people but it's important to remember that at his heart glimpse of tomorrow is a random effect and you can do everything right you can play everything perfectly and sometimes glimpse of tomorrow is just gonna fail you because you're getting random cards off the top of your deck so i'm glad we got to see the drawback along with the absurd power of the deck but the deck is really consistent it is really powerful it is really good at winning on turn three if it's not disrupted at the same time there are lots of good hate cards against it chalice of the void void mirror really good thalia is really good sanctum prelates really good counter spells especially free ones like force and negation really good so there are plenty of ways to hate on this because if our opponent can stop us from resolving glimpse of tomorrow's they just kind of beat us like <laughs> we don't really have a backup plan we can't cast our big finishers for the most part so unless we resolve a glimpse of tomorrow's we're not going to be able to win the game and i really don't know how good this deck is obviously our league went incredibly well i could see the floor of this deck being kind of a meme deck kind of the next tybalt's trickery the next zombie hunt where you're just like super aggressively mulliganing putting your opponent to the test by cascading into glimpse of tomorrow's and just crossing your fingers and hoping for the Best. If it works, it's amazing, and you crush people. If it doesn't work, it's a pretty hilarious fail, and you lose spectacularly. The ceiling, though, might be something like Living End, like weird Living End, where Living End is another deck that's built around cascading into a no mana cost spell. The problem with Living End is it's very graveyard dependent, so you lose to graveyard hate along with a lot of the stuff that beats us. Maybe this is new Living End, and Living End has been a legitimate, yeah, tier one, tier 
2, Tier 3, depending on the month or the meta, but it's been a legitimate deck in Modern for a long time now, so maybe this is going to fill that living end roll that doesn't care about the graveyard, but can do really powerful things really, really quickly, just jank people out. So anyway, that's five color glimpses to borrow. The deck's ridiculous. If you like to, spit it to win it. Cross your fingers. Hope for the best. It's a deck that easily has the power to 5-0, but if you get unlucky, you could just as easily 0-5. So that's Glimpse of Tomorrow. That's been our bunch of brew for this week. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.